So how would you say your perspective changed between you being recruited um, out of A&M to your point now? Well, um, I'd always grown up in the oil field. My, uh, my father was a land drilling contractor. Okay. So I always kind of uh, was around the oil field and uh, never the offshore drilling side, which that's what kind of attracted me to Atwood during my interviewing process at mm -hmm. A&M. But, uh, you know, I, <coughs> I always felt that, you know, that was going to be an interesting career, you know, just growing up with it. Um, I actually got into mechanical engineering just because it's a little more broad and I could have gone a different route in case the oil field at that time, you know, was maybe not in the, the best position to, to jump into it when I graduated from A&M. But it, it was at the time and uh, had a great opportunity with that one. So I guess uh, <coughs> probably over the 14 years at Atwood, I've kind of gained a better knowledge of just our dependence on the energy, you know, energy sources. And um, I think it's a, it's a great career. And, and, you know, we definitely have a lot of opportunity for young people coming into this career as a, uh, you know, we have a, I guess, you know, everybody refers to it as the great career change. Yeah. And we have uh, <laughs> several older, the older generation of the new old field that are, are going to be retiring. And we'll mm -hmm. have a big gap to fill. And there's going to be a lot of knowledge that's going to be lost there. So it's, it's going to be important that we uh, um, continue to, you know, try to have these these guys mentor the young younger people coming in and and really pass down that knowledge so we can learn from it. Or how do you think industry leaders can improve upon that? As far as uh, passing knowledge down? Passing knowledge down. Well, I mean, it kind of comes down to individual companies and their different programs that they have. You know, some companies have some great, you know, training programs already established within their companies, some of the larger companies. Some of the smaller companies have a little more formal ways of doing that. Um, Probably when I started at Atwood, we didn't really have a formal training program mm -hmm. per se, but uh, you know we're just really working with the guys day to day and, and just really finding out who can be a good mentor. Mm -hmm. Not everybody can be a, a great mentor, mm -hmm. so one of the things is we, we could do better is uh, you know figuring out who's a good mentor, who wants to be a mentor, and giving the, giving them a little training and how to do it, mm -hmm. and giving them a little bit of knowledge about. The young professional, and mm -hmm. you know, what does a young professional really, you know, want and, and need? And uh, it's a, it's probably a lot different than you know what the older, you know, generation went through when they first right. came into the old film. So we and need to equip the the mentors a little bit better on how to handle young professionals coming into the industry. I agree. And sometimes mentorship is better than any formal training program. You think is. Is there, is there a closer? <coughs> yeah, I think, um, you know, I, I, I did mention mentoring exclusively, or I wouldn't say it's exclusive. I, right. I think you need a combination of, you know, some formal training programs, mm -hmm. rotating through different positions in the company, um, or even on the rig, and, uh, and then uh, a mentor. So I think it's a combination of several of those that you need to have to develop a, a well-rounded you know, young professional coming into the industry. Right. And so if you were giving advice to somebody who was wanting to get into the industry, what would you tell them? Well, um, I would tell them, first of all, you know, it's a very exciting industry. So, you know, be prepared for different challenges. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to get to hopefully get to travel a lot international. It's a, that's pretty exciting. And you know, just be open um, to different cultures because depending on the company you're going to work with, you're going to work with cultures all over the world, and so you need to be aware of just the difference in the culture. And then just be aware that there's obviously a lot of old knowledge in this industry, and so, you know, be willing to uh, uh, ask a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. You've got to ask questions so you can learn from these guys that have been doing this for 20, 30 plus years. What are some ways that Atwood is confronting the challenges of the past and how would you, or what would you say is the biggest challenge facing the industry? 
the biggest challenge facing the industry, obviously, <coughs> you know, we got, um, uh, you know, the obviously the um, the oil industry, gas, you know, oil and gas industries. You know, there's obviously environmental issues mm -hmm. associated with that. So you have a lot of, you know, the the, um, the push for alternative energy, which is going to be important. Uh, it is important. It's right now. I think it's a uh, uh, a small percentage of the industry of the energy that we use worldwide, mm -hmm. um, and then that's going to grow. You know how fast it's going to grow will depend on how how much we uh, develop uh, the alternative energy sources and how economic that is. Mm -hmm. So I think that's going to be that's going to be something that all energy companies need to look at. Uh, you know how how we can become greener, how we can make our rigs. Uh, you know, uh, greener rigs, uh, running more efficiently, less pollution to the environment, um, and then this great crew change. You know, developing our people to be able to to uh, to move the industry to the next level. Mm -hmm. um, there's been a lot of talk about uh, mechanization, auto, you know, automation of mm -hmm. the the drilling process. I mean, you you look at uh, you know a lot of rigs out there, are pretty manual rigs, and we're you know we're I guess it's it's slow slow to change into this uh, uh, totally automatic or auto automated method, but uh, so there's a lot of work in that that respect, which is going to require a lot of uh, technical type people that uh, will be needed to run the rigs. Right. You you get away from the manual labor to the more you know electronic technicians and the you know uh, hydraulic specialists. So there's going to be a lot of development in that. Um, that kind of, uh, I guess, automated uh, movement towards making the rigs safer. Okay. The efficiency part, I guess, that's still, you know, that's being worked on. Yeah, there's, there's obviously consistency. You can, you can get the consistency, but efficiency, um, that's still needs to be, I think, worked on. Yeah.